Diet and exercise, drugs and medical care. These are what we usually associate with health. But what we don't think about are structures, not just physical structures, but economic, political, and social structures. They may be hard to see, yet they can be powerful determinants of our health. doing a series of photos for a book. I never get tired of taking pictures of the desert. Terrell Du Johnson is a member of the Tohono Otham American Indian tribe. Terrell is an artist and an activist on the reservation south of Phoenix, Arizona. I was Hopi. What'd you guys do? For the last 40 years, the tribe has suffered the highest rate of type 2 diabetes in the world. Half of Tohono Otham adults have type 2 diabetes. How she, she died. More wow. than seven times the national average. Rates for children are climbing rapidly. Are you staying with Grandma? Huh? Are you go, I go with them. You can go to the party. You can go swim. We'll see you later. Bye, you guys. For hundreds of years, the Otham lived self-sufficiently on tepary beans, choya buds, local game, crops irrigated by rain and groundwater. Their way of life kept them healthy. Today, that has changed. Danny, I was just asking people when I was taking pictures of them, how diabetes affects them, if it does affect them, mm -hmm. what their thoughts are about that. I think some people, they get kind of uh, depressed. Somebody has stated, well, my mom, my sister has diabetes, so I'll probably get it anyway. So that kind of, that attitude that you're, you know, you're eventually going to get it, you know. A lot of people in my family and around me had diabetes, and some, somehow I always thought, well, okay, that's just part of growing up. But they never said they had diabetes. They've always said, I just have bad sugar. I've actually had family members die on the operating table during the process of an amputation. He lost his leg. You know. Oh, he did? A couple of weeks ago, yeah. Oh, no. He was at the elders' conference and was in a wheelchair. A lot of people still don't know. Further north is the Gila River Reservation, home to the Pima. We're the same Autumn tribe, it's just that they're desert people, which is Tono. And we're Akimar Autumn, which we live by the river. See where those little mountains are at? The river yeah. is just on the south, but probably at the base of that mountain there. And Henrietta Lopez works there. with the Pima Maricopa yeah. Irrigation Project. At that point there, they divert it out of the river and into a canal like this, okay? This is what we call the Pima Canal, you know, connecting to the river. Her Pima ancestors were master water engineers. Over the centuries, they transformed the desert into farmland in the Gila River Basin. Living along the river meant our life. 
it was a part of us. Having the river flowing through our community meant having natural vegetation growing along the river, the willow, the mesquite, the cottonwood trees. I don't believe that really the non-Indian world understands how we're tied to the water, but the water is our life. Those were healthier times for the Pima. But within two short generations, they, like the Tohono O'odham, began dying from type 2 diabetes. Most of our uh, records are, uh, are computerized. For years, the medical community believed Pima susceptibility to diabetes was an anomaly, that something in their biology was unique. These are uh, files that uh, have been uh, collected from our uh, longitudinal study. The National Institutes of Health collected hundreds of thousands of Pima blood samples, tissue biopsies, and medical histories. Our collection of EKGs, these are... Dr. Peter Bennett has devoted most of his professional life to studying diabetes among the Pima. Running the lipid panels on the... After 40 years, $200 million worth of research has increased our understanding of the biochemistry of diabetes but neither the cause nor a cure has been discovered, and rates among the Pima continue to rise. Like many researchers, Bennett now turns his attention to genes for answers. The genetics of, of diabetes has turned out to be really uh, quite complicated. It appears that there are not just one or even two genes involved in the, in the predisposition. And in fact, today we still don't know what combinations of gene abnormalities really lead to uh, very high risks of the disease. But research has shown that whatever genes might increase the risk of diabetes are in fact found the world over, not just among the Pima. And whether they have the genes or not, some populations do have a higher incidence of disease. They're really very dramatic figures. These are not our own data, but from a, a paper a couple of years ago. Pacific Islanders, African Americans, Aboriginal peoples in Australia, all suffer from type 2 diabetes at rates double or triple the national averages. They have totally different histories. They're all different populations, and yet they all have the same manifestation. What's going on? What's the common denominator? And in every case, we're talking about people who have been dispossessed of their land and of their history. And they haven't been able to recreate it. In all these far-flung parts of the world, the social circumstance of being ripped from roots ends up with the same manifestation of disease. But this used to be where my sister and I and all the kids slipped, slapped in, and the room next door was, it was a two-bedroom place, you know. For the Tohono O'odham and many others across the globe, land, culture, and work vanished in the last century. No indoor plumbing. We used to take our showers, cook, and um, clean. And this was the only source of water. Today, half the Pima and the Tohono O'odham live below the poverty line. <clears throat> this condition is the real risk factor for diabetes for Dr. Donald Warren. Well, I went into a modern medical training kind of naively, thinking that I was gonna make an impact on Indian health as a primary care physician. Warren has treated Native American tribes in Arizona for years. He's also a health policy consultant from a family of Lakota traditional healers. And in truth, you can have an impact on an individual's lives and their health care, and that's very significant and meaningful. But the health problems occur long before people get to the clinic or to the hospital. When Dr. Warren's patients have type 2 diabetes, their bodies make the insulin needed to convert glucose or blood sugar into energy. But the insulin isn't used efficiently. Glucose then builds up in their bloodstream and can choke off small blood vessels leading to blindness, kidney failure, amputation. Diets high in sugar, fat, and carbohydrates 
can elevate glucose levels, but something else increases those levels as well.